What's up ketone addicts, it's Alex. Have you noticed that everyone seems to have this amazing, you know, morning routine where they get everything done? They meditate, they study, they read, they make a million dollars every day. But really, how many morning routine videos can you really watch before actually starting your own? You know, that was me. I watched so many videos trying to figure out what my best morning routine would be that I got so stuck on what to do that I never did anything. Then what would I do? I'd search YouTube again to find a better morning routine for me. And I'd try that and quit a few days later again. So many of us have been there. Well, in this video, I'm gonna share with you exactly how I made my morning routine to fit my personality and how and why I'm able to stick with it. But first, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you never miss a video. And please do me a huge favor and just tap that like button for the YouTube algorithm. I'm just getting started with this channel, so it'd mean a lot to me if you just tap it. Thank you. So you're ready to make your final morning routine, a routine that you're able to stick with long-term. Well, in fact, that routine will change and that's the first thing you need to accept, that it will not be the same every single day for the rest of your life. Once you can accept that and you're not stuck in this morning thing that you need to get done immediately no matter what, you can move on to formulating your perfect routine. The first thing you need to realize is that this routine cannot be too hard to achieve and not too hard to do every single day. I understand you probably wanna get as much possible done first thing in the morning, but the fact is we need to get a few simple things done to energize the rest of your day, and that's it. This is your best bet to having a truly productive and successful day. Now there's something called the Goldilocks zone. This is where planets are just far away enough from their star, but not too far away to hold an atmosphere that will sustain life, even though the Earth is obviously flat. So we need to find the same harmony in our morning routine. Now to find your own harmony, I suggest you take the Myers-Briggs personality test at 16personalities.com. This is not a sponsored video or an affiliate. I just got a lot of value out of that test. Once you get your results, read up, or even better, find someone on YouTube who has your personality and see if you resonate with them. This way you can see your similarities, your differences, your weaknesses, and so on, so you can plan your morning routine and the rest of your life. Next, you get to list three things that will fit into your Goldilocks zone. For example, my three things included meditation, exercise, and getting ready for that day. Three simple things that I can do every single morning that will propel me forward. Meditation is something I have tried over the years, but I've never been consistent with. I tried so many different methods, and I was just never able to do it every single day. It always felt forced. Looking back, it was not in my Goldilocks zone. And of course, I started scouring the internet and YouTube looking for what meditation might work for me. But again, I did that and didn't do anything with it. Finally, I was able to find a meditation routine that worked for me and it may help you as well. First thing we need to do is find your chair. You know how you always have your own chair? You know, in the living room where you watch TV, in the family room where you're just scrolling through your phone, maybe on YouTube videos, watching ketone addict videos on repeat. Yeah, we don't wanna sit in that chair. We wanna find a new chair, a new couch, whatever, in a different location and a chair that you never usually sit in. This is your new meditation seat. Now, once you sit in that chair with your phone on do not disturbed or off and far away from you, I want you to focus on nothing but your breathing and to just look around, to see what is around you. Acknowledge you're sitting in a chair and that's you, that's what you're doing. This is to ground you so you can become present in that moment. Once you become centered, you can close your eyes if you want or not and focus on what you really want in life, whether that be love, happiness, freedom, whatever it is, just focus on that. Don't force it, just focus. Now, if your ultimate goal is to have a billion dollars, then you should probably refocus uh, that goal. The fact is you don't want a billion dollars. The fact is you want what a billion dollars may be able to do for you. So maybe that number is a little high, but you want what comes with it, which is probably freedom to do what you want, freedom to buy what you want, freedom to give as much money as you want. You want to recenter that goal around something you have control over. Now, if something like this is an issue for you, I would recommend the book Beyond Willpower by Dr. Alex Lloyd. This will help you focus on what things you can control in your life and things you cannot. After you focus on this ultimate goal you want for your life, which in my opinion should be love and happiness, you can focus on your work, either you know your own business or what you do at work, as well as those tasks that you need to get done today or within the next week. And what I do is actually sit there and envision myself doing those specific tasks. Sometimes you'll need to break your meditation to take notes. That's perfectly fine. This is not hardcore doing too much meditation. Remember that Goldilocks zone. 
Lastly, I focus on the next few things I need to get done later this morning or during the day. These include the rest of my morning routine, along with the one thing I need to get done today to propel myself forward. I then tell myself I love myself and go downstairs and work out. So my morning exercise routine is basically body weights with a little bit of kettlebell. This is basically to get uh, my blood flowing. So the first thing I do is body weight jump squats. After I do that, I get down on the floor and do push-ups, and then I do some inverted rows. Then I do bench dips, followed by assisted pull-ups or chin-ups. Then on a mat, I do hip thrusts, followed by crunches and leg lifts. I finish with one-handed kettlebell swings, both arms, and then I do regular kettlebell swings as a finisher. That exercise is easy for me to do and it's in the Goldilocks zone and I can do it every morning without getting too exhausted. Remember, if your exercise in the morning is too much, you're gonna exhaust yourself for the rest of the day. And to finish my morning routine, I take a shower and get ready for the day. It doesn't matter if I'm leaving the house, I still get ready. I put my shoes on, I do my hair, whatever it is. This gets me in the mindset of being productive. Now, after choosing your three things that you wanna accomplish every morning, you need to look at your habits and make a few minor changes to those so you can incorporate these three things. For example, my first habit every morning was looking at my phone. I mean, your alarm goes off, you have to pick up your phone to turn your alarm off, and then it's already there, so you might as well stalk me on Instagram at Ketone Addict. But all joking aside, I had to change that habit. So I got one of those automatic light timers that would just turn my light on at 545 every morning. Now this usually woke me up, but I also had the alarm on my phone, which I put on the other side of the room to make sure I didn't sleep longer than five minutes after you know the, the light went on. Now, if you don't wanna do the light thing, you can just charge your phone on the other side of the room. So you have to get up to turn it off. Once I stopped checking my phone first thing in the morning, I was able to become proactive rather than reactive to social media, to emails, to text, and so on. Next, I needed to stop doing minuscule things right after waking up. This included weighing myself immediately. This included making coffee, emptying the dishwasher, checking the stock market, and so on. After doing these small things, it was so easy to talk myself out of doing my morning routine. These chores could easily be done after my morning routine and they still get done. Now let's compile these three things into the habits I already have so we can create my morning routine. 5.45, lights go on. 5.50, I'm out of bed, turning my other alarm off just to make sure I don't sleep in. I use the bathroom then head straight to the kitchen to make my morning cocktail, which is basically C4 ripped and Redmond's Real Salt. I head over to my meditation chair, finish my drink, and look around the room just to get my mind in the right mindset before meditating. I then sit back, relax, close my eyes, and envision my ultimate goal along with the goal I have for the day. At 6.20, I am downstairs in the garage working out. By 6.30, I'm already back upstairs doing those minuscule habits that I didn't do first thing in the morning. At about 7.15, I am in the shower and getting ready. By 8 a.m., I have already started the one thing I needed to do for the day. Now, obviously this will have to be worked into your own schedule. Maybe you have to wake up earlier because you have kids or you have roommates or you have to commute to work. But as long as you keep your morning routine in that Goldilocks zone, you should be great. So again, first thing I would recommend you take that personality test at 16personalities.com, then study yourself, study other people who have that personality and come to a realization of what you truly value. After that, plan the three things that would propel you to do better and list them out. It could be learning a language, it could be meditating, it could be exercising, it could be journaling, it could be writing a blog post. Those things you need to do to propel yourself forward. Then work them into your morning habits you already have. And there you go. A routine designed around your personality and the habits that have already been stuck with you for so many years. Now go plan your routine, type it in the comments below and smash that like button. Wait, what's 34 inches? That won't fit anything. 84. It's 84 inches. I need to fit my personality? Fuck. Yeah. Yellow? Okay, sorry. He's cutting it for me. So I'm cutting it to 58. No, nope, 68. That's 58. And then the blinds are 68. Yes. And Shit. I'm going to have to call you back. That's three in what, 10 minutes? Hmm.